grin on his face. <laughs> Down five, halfway through the third quarter. Downtown Indianapolis. Turner. Welcome back to another episode of Past, Present, Future. I am your host, Smitty, of course, and I'm joined by my co-host, as per usual, my guy Trippy OG, and of course the queen herself, Ebony, aka Mad Nick fan, uh, brought to you by the VSN Network on the VSN Basketball Station. You'll find us and also on all streaming platforms, Spotify, etc. You'll hear the audio if you don't want to see the video. Um, but yeah, you can check it all out on YouTube and through Spotify and alike. So uh, today's episode, as you guys know, we sort of dive into... Uh, teams of the past, uh, drafts of the past, uh, you know, you name it, we've done it on this show. Um, since restructuring, we've got a little bit more freedom in, as to what we can do. Originally, this was based around one team, no longer that. But today's episode, man, we've decided to do something that covers all three aspects of the name of the show. So we're going to be looking at the past, the present, and we're going to like have a little bit of a look at the future and 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 sort of talk on that. So. Being that it's uh you know it's the uh, World Cup currently, uh, group phases are ending tonight. So the last of the group phase games play tonight. USA playing uh, Team Jordan. This is a look at Team USA over the years and how they've looked in international format playing in both the World Cup and the Olympics. Now, for those of you who are, uh, who don't know and do know, obviously the Dream Team, the very first team that was ever comprised of NBA players when they allowed it. Um, I mean. Yeah, hands down would be the best team of all time. Um, but we've seen some pretty good teams over the run too. And I've also seen some times when it's been a bit of a struggle, even through the years that there was a lot of talent. Um, so we're going to cover all of that, of course, first. Um, but I mean, let's take it back to 1992. So uh, the you know Team USA dream team, I mean, that was uh, one to behold, right, guys? I mean, <laughs> the makeup of that team alone uh, was just something else to be, I mean, to realistically to to behold and to see because we saw the top talent in the league at that time who are all legendary players, all Hall of Famers. Uh, I think nearly everyone on that team, besides from obviously Christian Leitner, and I couldn't even be wrong about that, are uh, uh, all Hall of Famers or, or, or you know, uh, will be if they aren't in there yet. Uh, but we saw some of the, you know, <laughs> some of the best players to ever play the game really comprised most of that team. Um, now let's go straight to, uh, Ebony with this one, obviously 1992, we're throwing it back a little while. Uh, what is this team? What do you think of when you think of team USA, uh, dream team? And I mean, how, how special really was that of a team? It's the first time they ever allowed NBA players in and, you know, it was in Barcelona in Spain and it was just a no contest really, wasn't it? Yes, it was. It set the tone, you know, it set the tone for basketball, I think, nationally, period. You know, um, you see all, all these guys. I, I remember watching a document, uh, documentary about about it, and uh, they were saying how they were followed everywhere. No matter where they went, you know, people were following them. You know, you had Michael Jordan, you had all the greats on this team, this one team. And uh, it, it, like I said, set that tone for, for the future to want to play the game the right way and uh also for for us it showed that they weren't too big for the to play in the olympics they wanted to you know they wanted to play represent their country you know that's not always what we have uh had when it comes to usa basketball i'm pretty sure we're going to talk about that later but um they yeah i I just think this team was it it was no nobody had any chance at all (laughs) at all nobody had any chance and i think Ebony, uh, as you sort of mentioned about getting the chance to play for the team, um, what a way to start out the very first year that the NBA allowed it uh, and to say, and, you know, to, to get that team, because you could have been, you know, you would understand if guys didn't want to put their hand up, 
you know, uh, I mean, there is that side of it of maybe they'd waited long enough. They wanted to for years, but then there's also that side of it. It's the first time, maybe not everyone wants to do it first time around or put their name up for something that could be a shambles possibly, you know what I mean? Or, or not what it seems. Uh, but you know, you had the very best of the best all put their hand up and say, this is it. We want to do this. And, uh, and I mean, the dream team such a fitting name. Uh, you know, it's <laughs> like, like I said, yeah. at the top of the show, it was just, yeah, it was a team of, uh, of, okay. yeah. Of a lot of and that was when the world the world was introduced to Charles. <laughs> Charles yeah. Barkley. <laughs> yeah, of course, of course. No doubt. No Everybody doubt. got to got to see the character he was. He was actually the leading scorer of that team, which is oh, I, I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, and and you could have been you could have been forgiven for not you could you can be forgiven for not knowing that because of the names that were on that team, namely, obviously, especially one Michael Jordan. Um, you know who you would if, when you hear that name and know he's on that team, you're going to assume that that's the top scorer, right? But Trippy, your first thoughts on that team and and what that meant for uh, Team USA basketball going forward. Um. Well, my first thoughts, of course, you know, we all had to go back and look at highlights. You know, it wasn't even around at the time, but. Mm-hmm it actually inspired you to see like, yo, you didn't know that a whole group of guys like this, besides being in an all-star game, but like in a setting to where it actually mattered for something could actually play in cohesiveness like that. Like, like, yo, y'all playing together like this. Like imagine if we had one team like this in the NBA, you know, it was, it was kind of fire to see, but overall, I think the thing that got me was just like, I think that was like the whole beginning of this USA versus Spain beef. Like, cause we went over there and just went like dog walked everybody. It was like, you know what? Slap you up. You know what? You're not getting no cake. You can't get $200. I don't even like you today. We were just going through everybody. So it was a yeah. beautiful thing to watch, but you know, you know, then we started getting into the, to the crazy situation to where we start looking kind of bad, you know, start, start, start declining a little bit, but we, we're going to get there. We're going to get there, but this dream team set it off. Um, it can't be replicated. Definitely can't be duplicated ever again, but mm-hmm. for anybody that ever wants to fall in love with the game of basketball, if you ever like have those doubts, so you feel like the game is like falling off, go watch some highlights of the dream team. I promise you your love for the game will come all the way back. <laughs> and no, no doubt, no doubt. And I mean, look, the run from uh from that that team through to two thousand, so for an eight year run across obviously uh several Olympics and uh, a couple World Cups was pretty unmatched. I mean, um, there was a team that was composed and put together for the uh, nineteen ninety four World Cup, uh, which was had none of the players from the uh, original Dream Team two two years prior that were in the Olympics. Um, this was you know a FIBA World Cup like like what's on right now. And I mean, even that for a team, which was done the dream team too, uh, had, you know, Derek Coleman, Joe Dumas, Kevin Johnson, Larry Johnson, Sean Kemp, Dan Marley, Reggie Miller, Alonzo Mourning, Shaquille O'Neal, Mark Price, Steve Smith, and Dominique Wilkins. Uh, and that's in the middle of the nineties. Uh, obviously in this year, this is uh Michael Jordan was sitting out as well. Um, team USA took the chance to showcase other talent. And these, some of these guys were at the height of their game or, or weren't even at the height of it yet, but was still just such a dominance, obviously winning gold there in Toronto. And then we had a third team, obviously it's that like went on. Dominance. Did you hear the names you just stated, bro? Yeah. Wait, 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 you, 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 you said dominance. one of my favorite, Sean uh, Kemp. Like, yo, bro, where were they getting a rebound at? Like, yeah. what? no doubt. I mean, then we had the third team, right? Which was obviously the uh, the 1996 Summer Olympics. So two years ago, again, obviously, as you guys, for those of you who don't know, it alternates every two years. Uh, uh, so every two years, you've got um, FIBA World Cup. And then the following two years later, you've got Olymp- uh, Summer Olympics. And it goes like that in uh, in motion. So uh, then in, in 1996, in Atlanta, um, we had uh five members of the original dream team. So Barkley, uh Carl Malone, Scotty Pippen, uh David Robinson, and John Stockton. Uh, and then you had another two members of the uh NBA 50 greatest players list at the time, which was around that time, um, which was actually named in that year, uh, which ended up being Hakeem Olajuwon and Shaquille O'Neal, who had played obviously in the two years prior in the World Cup, but hadn't played in a um in uh, an Olympics yet. And you know what, guys? In that, obviously, they won another gold. This was in uh, Atlanta in the, in Georgia. Now, in that one, on home soil, the USA, a Team USA won by an average margin of victory of 31.8 points per game. Gee, 
that 1990, uh, the two, the, the dream team year, they won by average of 44, something like that. <laughs> yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, that's right. 40, uh, 43.8 points. So, uh, sec- and you know what? That's still second most behind the 1956 US team. So, <laughs> That's still not crazy. even the most but uh but i mean look to to yeah to to dominate you know 43.8 points 31 point uh eight points you know per game uh in uh you know two different olympics is just insane um as you guys know it's just insane and and you know 19 appearances uh for team usa over the journey to now as well in the olympics and you know 16 gold medals uh, and a, and a lot of them came in that sort of that area as well um, but I mean, just a pure dominance run, right? So you had, you know, you had your 1992 dream team, like we said, as we sort of spoke about, it set up the way for what was to come. So your 1994, um, FIBA world cup team, your 1996 Atlanta Olympics, uh, you know, uh, I guess another, that's technically a dream team three, right. And then, uh, and then, you know, going on to win in 2000, again, in Sydney over here in Australia, um, that was another dominant team where we saw obviously the, the, uh, the famed uh, Vince Carter dunk of death over Frederick Vice. I had a question. Did you actually <laughs> like attend that? I mean, it was in the, it was in the. No, 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 no. So I was only what, six years old at that time. And that was, uh, I, I live in a different city. I live, uh, yeah, unfortunately it wasn't here in Melbourne. Um, so I didn't get to attend that, but I do remember watching that on, uh, on tv because obviously we've got a large coverage of it um but i mean team usa as much as we're talking about him here that's the reason why teams like australia as good as we've been at times have sort of been held back because of teams like that um and haven't haven't ever tallied higher than a bronze medal so uh, and we only just did that for the first time in tokyo uh, a couple of years ago so it's because of the dominance of teams like team usa so uh i mean now that we've spoken about i guess the past of um, in in terms of success Let's go into what ended up eventuating four years later after the last gold medal, gold medal in um in the Olympics. 